Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Caleb. Today I'd like to talk to you about creating random mazes using disjoint sets. This does have a prerequisite in that it assumes that you're already familiar with the disjoint set data structure. If you're not, or if you need a refresher, I would encourage you to check out my disjoint set videos, which are linked below. This random maze creation, I just want to make a maze. I want to make it random. I know how big it's going to be. So the idea is that to make an M by N maze, I'm going to start with an M by N rectangle where all of the walls currently exist. And I'm going to now randomly knock down the walls. So to do that, I'm going to randomly select a cell and one of its neighbors. If the two cells are currently not connected, I'm going to knock down the wall between them. Our initial maze setup for a five by five maze would look something like this. We do have walls not showing for the starting point, which we're assuming is at zero, zero in the top left, and the ending point, which we're assuming is in this case four, four. In dealing with the random numbers and so forth and some other aspects, it's helpful to have just a set of numbers for the cells. So we know the locations by X and Y, but we're also going to translate that to just a value. So we're going to count starting at the top left, move right, and then go to the next row and so forth until we get down to, in this case, 24. So this gives us an easy way to deal with our random numbers. So the idea, as I said, is we're going to randomly pick a cell. So suppose that our random number generator gives us 11. Then we want to pick one of the neighbors. So we're going to pick to go left, up, right, down, one of those. And in this case, we're going to say we picked 10. Those are not currently connected. So we're going to knock down that wall. Now the question is, where do the disjoint sets come in? I heard about random numbers. I heard about setting up a 2D array. I heard about keeping track of, is there a wall there or not? Which we're going to do with simple Booleans. True if there's a wall, false if there's not. But where are the disjoint sets? So let's suppose that our two picks are the 15 and the 10. Now there's a wall between those. But they're currently connected. We can get from 10 to 15 with no problem. So we don't really want to knock down that wall. We want to leave that one in place so that our maze stays reasonably complex and doesn't become just this open space that you can wander through without paying attention to the walls, right? Because there aren't walls there. So this is what we're going to do with the disjoint sets. The idea is that the disjoint set objects are going to be the cells of the maze, which we've numbered from zero to the number of items. So that's simple. When the wall is knocked down, we're going to union those two cells to indicate that they are now in the same set. They're now connected to each other. And of course, everything connected to them is also connected because once we knock down that wall, we can get between everything in the one set to everything in the other set. Before knocking down a wall, we're going to use the find capability of our disjoint sets to make sure that the cells are in different sets at this point. So what kind of disjoint sets do we want to use? We have some choices in terms of how we're going to handle our unions. And the answer to that is that we want union by size. And the reason we want union by size that we can use that to stop the maze when all the cells are connected because that's when we want to stop our process is when we've got everything all in one big connection with lots of walls still in the way to make things interesting. We will use path compression as well because big mazes we will need it for some efficiency. For a little five by five maze which of course doesn't produce a very interesting maze not very important, but when we have a very large maze, then we're going to need some path compression to make that run reasonably quickly. Okay, so I've actually created a little program in Unity uh, to show you what this looks like. So here we have a five by five maze, similar to what we were looking at in the slides. And I've got the disjoint set here. 
which currently everything is in its own set because they're all separated by the walls. And in the console here, we're going to see what the program is doing, what it's looking at as it goes. The first thing it's going to do in this case is to randomly pick the seven and the two. Those are not connected, of course, because nothing's connected. So it knocks down that wall. And if we look over in our array for our disjoint sets, we can see that the two is now pointing at the seven. Then we do five and six. Those are also previously not connected. So we make them connected and we see our disjoint set getting updated. 16 and 17, same thing. Take a look at the disjoint set. Zero and one, again, those are connected. Now we're gonna have cases where it tries things that are already there. So in this case, it picked two and went to seven. Those were already connected, so we're going to ignore that. Now it tries 17 and 22, this pair, and removes that wall. Uh, 23 and 18, removes that one. 12 and 17, removes this one. Three and two would be this pair. And we can see as we're going that our array continues to update. Then we have 11 and 16, seven and eight, three and four, 23 and 22. 11 and 16 were already connected. So that would be this pair. 13 and 12 were not, however. So that would be this pair. 16 and 21 gets us this. 24 and 23, we now have actual access to the exit from a fair bit of things. 9 and 4, 19 and 18, See this pair, we missed, had several that were repeating, um, but then we get to the 6 and 7, which would be this pair, 10 and 11 was opening this up. Got some things that didn't work. So, for example, um, 18 and 13, which is one of these examples of this is 13, this is 18. Um, that wall exists, but these are already connected, so we don't want to use it. That's where our disjoint sets were useful for us. We do get 2 and 1, 9 and 14, as well as some extra tries, 15 and 10. So that's opening up this, 11 and six. And now we're actually connected, but we still do have a wall um, that hasn't been knocked down. So we have something isolated. We're gonna keep going until we actually pick that wall, one of these walls to knock down. And then we're done and our maze is complete. So I hope you're getting this idea of how the disjoint set is working. Um, do notice that almost everything's pointing at the 16. The reason for that is that we are using path compression. So we're making that tree nice and shallow. Now let's take a look and see what happens with a little bit um, bigger maze. So I'm going to actually change this. So let's actually make it a 10 here. And I'm going to keep displaying the array, but I'm going to run automatically. And I've set it at a half second delay. So hopefully you can kind of follow what's going on. You can slow down the video if it's a little too fast for you. So let's run this. And we'll see the choices as we go. And we can see the array updating. I 
and see it trying some things that don't work as well as things that do as we get to that point where things it's trying are already connected. We could go back and see some of what um, it had to skip. So that's the notion. You can see we can begin to make mazes that are a little bit more complex. So now let's do a 20 by 30 maze and see how this looks. Um, I've sped up the delay quite a bit. Uh, notice that the dimensions are a little backward. In case that's been confusing you, um, that's just because Unity's coordinate system is a little bit different from the one we're using because I'm putting zero, zero at the top left and working my way right and then down because that's what makes sense when you're doing an ASCII-based maze, which is what I'm doing for class, for program. Unity's coordinate system is different, so I've actually turned the camera so that it looks the same in terms of the coordinate system as what um, the ASCII would be. Obviously, it doesn't really matter what your coordinate system is, just that what you're doing, you're expecting what you're actually getting. So let's see what this looks like just for fun with a fairly good sized maze. And we can see it takes a little bit of time. Even at 0 0.02 seconds per item, 20 by 30s quite a bit. We can see that we end up with a very complex maze as we get to something a little bit larger because all of the things are connected, but all of the walls that weren't necessary are not there. So we're going to see lots of dead ends. Um, let's see if we're heading in the right direction. Yeah, that will get us to the end. Yay. Now, one thing that might happen is you might want a slightly less complex maze than this one for some purpose, where you're not going to have every single cell available. It turns out that we can use our same disjoint set to allow us to stop early, but after the beginning and end are connected. So instead of saying, let's stop when every single thing is connected, we'll stop when the first cell is connected to the last cell. And we can do that fairly simply using one of our disjoint set operations. So let's come back here and actually click my stop early button where I have the program use that logic of, hey, let's check to see if the beginning and end are connected. So let's see if that looks any different when we do that. So we're also getting a little bit different ordering because random. I haven't started with the same seed, so I'm not getting the same pairs. Okay. And we can see here, we've got everything connected. Do we have any disconnected sections? Yeah, we have at least a few little boxes here. Sometimes we get quite a bit more. Um, I'm going to actually run it one more time just to see if we see anything that's a little bit simpler. Obviously, with randomness, you never know what you're going to get for sure unless you give it a specific seed. And we can see that this time we do end up, I mean, here's the set. Here's quite a bit that's unreachable. Um, so we have a somewhat simpler, here's another area that's unreachable. We have quite a bit that is um, not reachable. So that ends up with a somewhat simpler maze where it may be easier, especially if we did something to fill in the unreachable parts to make the maze a little bit easier to navigate. So we can do it either way, make the super complex maze or the less complex maze.
So thanks for watching. I hope you feel like you learned a little something about how we would actually go about creating random mazes using disjoint sets. I hope to see you next time.